Well, with Mr. With Lord Alistair Morgan again, and this time, something more provocative. What is the comparison, or the similarities even, between Mrs. Thatcher and Mrs. May? Some people see a lot of similarities, maybe because they're both women, um, but I don't quite see it like that. How would you depict it? Uh, what are the pros and cons of this argument? Well, um, to reminisce a little, Margaret Thatcher made a huge impact upon me in the autumn of 1969. We, the Labour Party, were then in government, but we had suffered a tremendous embarrassment upstairs in committee where an education bill had been wrecked. The main clause had been defeated. Defeated in strange circumstances, one member had gone, I think, to the toilet. Another <laughs> member was dictating a letter a few yards away, and when the bell went, he only managed to get his arm in. And he lost a vote. And the uh, chairman ruled that he was not present. All oh, right. The vote. We lost the vote. Yeah. And in consequence, uh, Margaret Thatcher was there <coughs> as the person leading the opposition on the bill, making submission to the Speaker that the bill should be scrapped and abandoned. And um, she really was tip-top. I remember saying to myself, crumbs, she's able, she's articulate, she's attractive as a personality, yeah. and she can speak with authority. Yeah. This woman, with luck, could be Home Secretary someday or Foreign ah. Secretary. It never occurred to me she'd <laughs> never be thought to be Prime Minister. No. no, no. But she had her own convictions and probably oh, yes. a, a different background altogether to Mrs May. Oh, yes. I think the main difference between them is this. If you ask yourself what made Margaret Thatcher tick, I think the answer would be her relationship to her father, the late Alderman Roberts. Alderman Roberts had run a grocery business very, very successfully. His attitude was essentially Victorian, or post-Victorian, only in a technical way. Yeah. He believed that if things were bad, you got rid of staff. You cut down on your investments. You never ran into overdraft. <laughs> In other words, it may have been an ideal Victorian concept of the way to run a business, yeah. but not to run a country. That's right. And her fault, I think, was that she thought she could run a country the same way as a late She mother. modelled herself it was an on that pattern. It was an act of pietas. Yeah. An act of respect and almost a worship of the old boy. And that's the way to do things. Well, highly commendable. Yeah, yeah, I know, but that's how she thought. That's the way she thought. Yeah. And But of course, you can't run a country in that way no. without terrible, terrible injustice. And what do you make of Mrs May? Somebody asked Mrs May nine months ago, with what historical figure do you associate yourself? Do you remember her answer? No. Elizabeth I. Good Lord. That's well, amazing. God save us. Yeah. Uh, she thinks that she lives in imperial times of Drake and Raleigh when you could dictate to the lesser breeds of this world, as Kipling called them, and where you can still exercise an imperial, uh, lofty-nosed attitude toward everybody else. That's the way she thinks of Europeans. Yeah. And the way that she thinks, I think, of most other peoples in this world. Yeah, and you can see, you know, if you were to look at how Mrs. Thatcher campaigned in general elections and how Mrs. May hid oh. from people, oh, yes, yes. you know what I mean? Oh, yes. Now, whether she's hiding out of fear or lack of confidence, but it also shows disrespect. I don't think you can compare the two men in terms of ability or sensitivity or diplomacy. No. Thatcher did some very cruel, harsh things. But they were within the scope and rubric of the British Constitution. She had respect for that. She had respect for the uh, Easter Agreement yes. in, in regard to Ireland. Yeah. That was something that Blair and um, Major, Major uh, and others, of course, uh, are to be very greatly uh, revered for. But she would never have done anything to harm that. But this woman did. That's right. She allied with the DUP, knowing full well that she was imposing great and unnecessary strain upon that agreement. And do you see real dangers in Northern Ireland? Well, uh, not the, going back to how it the was. Problem, the problem but how on earth will it 
The continue. problem in the election in Northern Ireland goes back, beyond the election, goes back to January. Yeah. They haven't, since January of, of this year, managed to meet uh, as a government. It is a vacuum, and very soon, I'm afraid, they will have to be direct rule. Yeah. But um, she has made direct rule all the more certain. That's right. By allying with those very, very unwholesome people. Yeah, or, and for me... Uh, unwholesome politicians, yeah. anyway. Yeah. And for me... Mention that people... And unwholesome politicians. Yeah, well, and for me, you see, listen, Mrs. Thatcher had a respect for Parliament. Oh, yes. I don't believe Mrs. May has very much respect for Parliament at all. Well, if you look at the um, withdrawal bill now, then it's perfectly clear that she's prepared to ride roughshod over the rights of Parliament to exercise the so-called Henry VIII clauses, Yes. which means that since 1539, if you want to, you can have ministers overrule and override the will of Parliament. Yeah. And when you read the withdrawal bill, it will extend to thousands of regulations. Somebody has calculated, I think, on a bi-party basis, that you could have ministers making about 9,000 different regulations. And with regulations, you've got to vote for them or against them. You can't amend them. You can't change them. That's the nonsense you So mean. once the it minister makes, lays it before Parliament, that's it? It makes a nonsense of the ordinary procedures of legislation yeah. whereby you go through everything line yeah. by line, clause by clause, and amend what you want yeah. to amend. And even, we'll close with this, even even on um, Europe and the European community. Now, a lot of people mistakenly think that Mrs Thatcher was against the EU. She was not against the single market. She was one of the architects of the single market and strongly supported it. What she was against was maybe regulations, maybe the controlling aspect. But Mrs May is now preaching a line that I don't think Mrs Thatcher would ever dream of. I don't think Margaret Thatcher would have ever wished to do anything which would hurt and harm Britain no. as a community. That's right. And um, whatever her faults were, they didn't include anything like that at all. But this woman knows that we are leading ourselves into a trap and a trap that could have very, very fateful results for yeah. us. Can I end on a, on a provocative note or question? It just occurred to me now. It wasn't the way I planned it. I have a feeling whichever party takes us out of Europe, right, will not be in power for many election afterwards. Now, I don't know, I don't know, I, I've jumped this upon you. Well, um, I don't see all, all how they'd be forgiven. Say, it depends so much on the, on the circumstances. But um, if it be the case that the, the um, present government will cling on to power with the help of the DUP, and in other words, go through their full five-year term yeah. with Brexit as a total disaster in two years' time, the mind boggles as to thinking how unpopular they will be That's right. five years from now. Yeah, it could be different sort of demonstrations. Oh, it could be very not, different. Not the one that she's worried about <laughs> on the, from the people who want to leave. She could be facing a very different uh, situation altogether. Well, there we go. Well, it's a, it's a frightening uh, um, prospect. Yeah. But so as Reagan, as Reagan said to someone, uh, whoever that candidate against him was, you're no John Jack... Jack Kennedy, yeah. so Mrs May is no, ter is no Mrs Thatcher? No, I think in terms of ability and sensitivity and diplomacy, there is a huge and wide gulf between them. Well, there we go, huge and wide gulf. Thank you very much. Taboch.